Alright, thanks for watching. And today we want to do something really cool again. Namely, I want to use linear algebra, more precisely change of coordinates, to evaluate the following monstrous integral. Now, if you're a calculus student, good luck doing that. It's not impossible, by the way. You would just have to write, you know, cosine squared in terms of cosine of 2t and cosine cubed in terms of cosine of 3t. But the point is, with linear algebra, it provides us a systematic way of doing this, a systematic framework. And so, as I said, we want to use change of coordinates. So first of all, let's write this integral into a slightly easier way. So consider the following basis. So let b, the beautiful b, to be the basis 1 cosine t cosine squared of t all the way up to cosine to the fifth of t. basis for what? A basis for the span of those functions. And it turns out those functions are linearly independent. So we're good. And why is that nice? Because it turns out, with respect to that basis, f has very nice coordinates. So let this function be f of t. Then the coordinates of f with respect to b, they're just the coefficients. In other words, you can literally read off the coordinates. That's 3, 1, 5, minus 3, 7, 4. Okay, so minus 3, 1, 5, minus 3, 7, 4. And why are coordinates useful? They basically represent a barcode for this function. So think of f as a delicious apple or produce. Well, a computer doesn't really understand what an apple is, but it does understand, you know, the numbers minus 3, 1, 5, minus 3, 7, 4. So, here, mathematically, it just gives us an easy way to handle this function. It's easier to handle a number in R6 than with, you know, handle this whole complicated function. And what we want to do we want to express this function in terms of a nicer basis, which here is given as follows. So now, let C be the following basis. 1, cosine of 2t, cosine of 3t, etc., etc., up to cosine of 5t. And why is that useful? Because, first of all, not only will we be able to express f easily in terms of c, but moreover, the crux of the proof is that those functions are much easier to integrate than the function cosine t, cosine squared t, etc., etc., cosine to the fifth t. And so, the goal is, once we have our original barcode, we want to find a new barcode. So maybe here's the goal. We want to find the coordinates of f with respect to c. But it turns out there's an easy way of obtaining those coordinates. It's with this change of coordinates matrix. So. In terms of our original old barcode, we get that the coordinates of f with respect to c equals to the coordinates of f with respect to b and times, on the left-hand side, of something that allows us to go from b to c, which is just this, what's called a change of coordinates matrix. And so once we found this change of coordinates matrix, we're basically done. We found the new barcode of f. That said, it turns out this thing is rather hard to find because really to express this, 
you would have to find, you know, um, cosine of cosine cubed of t in terms of cosine of 2t, cosine of 3t, which is hard to do. It's much easier to do it the other way around because that would require us just to find, you know, cosine of 2t in terms of cosine squared and other functions. So, instead of doing it directly, let's find the opposite transformation. Let's find this machine that allows us to go from C to B. And now, let me tell you what it is. In a second, I'll tell you how to find it. So it's just 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's a perfect point to fast forward, by the way. <laughs> So, minus 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 3, 0, 4, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 8, <laughs> 0, 8, 0, don't worry, I'll tell you in a second how to find this. 0, 5, 0, minus 20, 0, 60. And the question is, how do you find this? To find p from c to b, you have to take every vector in c and express it in terms of b. So for example, what this means is you have to take cosine of 2t and express it in terms of cosine squared. And the way to do this is just use a definite double angle formula. So if you do that, you should get something like minus 1 plus 2 cosine squared of t. And that's why cosine of 2t is minus 1 times 1 plus 0 times cosine of t plus 2 times cosine squared of t plus 0 cosine cubed of t, etc., etc., up to cosine to the fifth of t. And same thing here, that's with cosine of 3t, cosine of 4t, cosine of 5t. Okay, however, so this matrix in theory is easy to find. It's not quite what we want. We literally want the inverse transformation that goes from b to c. So, to find our original answer, you literally reverse this. You take the inverse of this matrix p from c to b inverse, which is this matrix inverse, and it gives you another horrible matrix, which how about I just write it down? Again, Dr. Payan's show, literally wasting your time, but <laughs> hopefully not. Turns out the inverse here is given by 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then let me check, uh, correct number of zeros. No, there's one more, okay. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0, okay. And then um, 1 half, yeah, 1 half, 0, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, and then 0, 3 quarters, 0, 1 quarter, 0, 0, 3 eighths, 0, 1 half, 0, 1 eighth, 0, and then 0, 5 eighths, 0, 5 sixteenths, 0, 1 sixth. Maybe 1 sixteenth. Let's see. Let's just say 1 sixteenth. Okay, and this is sort of the process of saying, well, cosine squared of t is actually 1 half plus 1 half cosine of 2t. So it turns out you could find this matrix, but a computer can do it. That's not a problem. All right, and the question is, how do you deal with that now? We found this matrix, and so we don't need this anymore, by the way. And so to find f of c, you just plug in this matrix into f of b. So f of c, that's just equals then to this matrix. Let me call that star. 
times f of d, and that, that's again, star times the vector, minus 3, 1, 5, minus 3, 7, 4, and ultimately, you get something like 17, 8, 5, 4, 6, 1 half, 7, 8, and 1 fourth. Okay, and that's, again, we're just dealing with vectors. Let's now go back and figure out what that is. In other words, what this tells us is the barcode of F with respect to the new and cool bases is just this thing. So literally, our function minus 3 plus cosine of t plus 5 cosine squared of t minus 3 cosine cubed of t plus 7 cosine to the fourth of t plus 4 cosine to the fifth of t, which is our original function, in that new basis just becomes 17 eighths plus 5 fourths cosine of t plus 6 cosine of 2t plus 1 half cosine of 3t plus 7 eighths cosine of 4t plus 1 fourth cosine of 5t. In other words, you took this complicated function and wrote it in terms of easier functions and now here's where the fun actually begins. Now it turns out the function that was very hard to integrate becomes easy to integrate. So now let's just take integrals dt dt and then that just becomes 17 eighths t plus 5 fourths sine of t plus 3 sine of 2t plus 1 sixth sine of 3t magical okay, plus 7 over 32 sine of 5t no 4t sorry and plus 1 over 20 sine of 5t plus a constant oh my god how cool is that you might say this is cool, but I say this is linear algebra. And you might say this is silly, because you could just have, you know, uh, uh, use the half angle formulas and everything. But what is nice about this is that once you have your matrix, you can actually use it to just to calculate the integral of any linear combination of those power of cosine. Just to illustrate, what if you wanted to do this? Integral of 1 plus cosine of t plus cosine squared of t plus blah, 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 plus cosine to the fifth of t. Then, the coordinates of f with respect to that old basis is just 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And so, to get the coordinates of f with respect to the new basis, just as before, you take the same matrix and apply it to f of b. So, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And you get something like 15, 8, 19, 8, 1, 9 over 16, 1 over 18, 9 over 16, should be here. And then to integrate this function, you just integrate this thing so our answer really becomes integral of 15 eighths plus 19 eighths uh, cosine of t plus cosine of 2t 
plus 9 over 60 cosine of 3t plus 1 over 18 cosine of 40 plus 9 over 16 cosine of 5t dt which again becomes super easy to integrate 15 8 plus 19 8 uh, sine of t plus 1 half sine of 2t plus so 9 over 48 which I think simplifies to something 3 over 16 or something uh, cosine sine of 3t plus okay, 1 over 72 I hate to do algebra on the spot, okay. Sine of 40 and then plus 9 over 80 sine of 5t plus a constant. So how cool is that? It's literally this matrix, is this little box that allows you to evaluate any you know, linear combination of powers of cosine. And you might say, is there more? And in fact there is because there's nothing special about cosine to the fifth power. You can do any power up to cos, you know, cosine seventh, cosine eighth. And in fact, the only difference is the matrix would be a bit bigger. You would still have the part of the matrix I wrote before. You just expand it by adding more columns. And in fact, this also works you know, for powers of sine. And I believe also if you combine cosine and sine, that's also fine. So it is a very useful trick, and I think it's just a you know, junior's dream, because it's already a sophomore's dream, but like, it's like an amazing way of evaluating integrals using calculus. All right, so if you like this linear algebra extravaganza and want to see more linear algebra videos and more math videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.